God. And the minute, you know, where we feel a new beginning, we welcome them with open arms. And it's not, you are gonna, we forget about you. But does the community see Satan at work in the outside world? In the outside world, yes, and in us too. Boy, Satan, he, he's a wicked guy. Man alive, he's, he's at work overtime. Tough on these family members to be separated like yes, that. Yes, and they're so separate. It's as if they live on different planets once uh, family members have left the community. Just last week, a young man named Andrew Baisley called to speak to his mother, who was gravely ill, and was told that his mother had, in fact, died. He had not been informed, and he was told in, that he would not be welcome to attend her funeral. Andrew decided to go anyway, and in fact was welcomed, and his grandparents offered him some refreshment and, and felt better for it. But uh, it's very difficult. The community says they don't stand in the way, it, they just follow the person's wishes, and they will inform people if, if they're told to do so. All right. When we come back, politics, religion, and Satan, a dangerous mix. Tomorrow, a bargain hunter's guide to the outlets of Kittery, Maine. And next, breeding the Bruderhof way. The Bruderhof has several businesses. One makes toys and furniture for daycare centers. Another, equipment for the handicapped. Then there's the kennel, okay. where critics contend the Bruderhof is breeding attack dogs. Bring. No, no, it's not true. It's actually what it is. It's a sport. It's it's like the, for Germany, it's like the World Series or the uh, Super Bowl. Christoph Arnold, whose dog's name, by the way, is Kit, says the notion of attack dogs is just more noise from ex-members who have lost oh. their way. <laughs> I feel very sorry for them because actually deep down they love the community, yet they do not want to take the commitment upon themselves. And sad to say, most of them live a pretty messed up life. Jesus says you should rejoice when you are attacked. So we actually rejoice and you must be doing something right. Indeed, the Bruderhof spent its early years in desperate poverty. No more. I would say it's in the several hundred million dollar range. We're dealing with a, a very prosperous, wealthy, uh, powerful group. Unlike the Amish, the Bruderhof have no aversion to technology. In fact, they're into high technology. It belongs to free enterprise. I don't know if our listeners have heard of the American dream of free enterprise. And we want part of the pie also. Arnold says the Bruderhof's Gulfstream jet is chartered out as a business. He acknowledges using it for mission trips, but denies rumors that he uses it for personal vacations with his family. Some people might think because I travel to Europe, I travel to Israel, I travel to Nigeria, that I'm a very special person and I have lots of fun. It isn't that glorious as it looks. Now, how does that fit with your grandfather's philosophy? Add poverty. He, he believed in a vow of poverty. He would say that his flock has really gone astray. Yes, we live in good times, a lot better, and good times make bad Christians, I told you that, and, and, and we have to be careful. But I'm still proud of the jet. If the Bruderhof has taken to free enterprise, they're not so sure about other American values. Do you believe in democracy? No. I'm thankful for democracy. Democracy is better. We have, we have lived under Hitler, so democracy isn't all bad, but democracy can also be a tool of Satan. It can hide other evils. Satan is real to you. He is, he is, it's he, not an idea. He is 100% real. For us, there are only two powers. That's light and darkness. There's no gray in between. That tendency to see the world in terms of black and white, light and darkness, in or out, us or them, may make finding middle ground difficult. I mean, Jesus says in the end times, 
Daughter will turn against father, brother against brother, sister against sister, children against parents. The house will be divided. And it's going to get worse before it gets better. Are there signs that the world is nearing the end times? Very much. Like all tragedies, I don't think this tragedy or this story will have a happy ending. I think it's possible that, like other groups, such as the Branch Davidians, that they could become convinced that this was the end time that the attack made by ex-members, by sociologists, by possibly by congressional or, or governmental investigations would be the end of the world. At the same time, there are people of goodwill on both sides who want to heal the rift and talk and talk it out and hope to come to some resolutions. That you would hope for. More of Chronicle after tonight's Lottery Live. Stay with us. On Friday the 13th, how fear sells, and who's buying it? Thanks for joining us tonight, and have a good evening. I'm Peter Mahegan. I'm Mary Richardson. Have a good night. Good night.